y'all. Welcome to Rec to Redeem, where we confront the complex realities of racism and faith. I'm your girl, Kavana, and today we are going to be covering a hot topic that has been sizzling on these internets out here for the past two weeks, three weeks or so. It is the Botham Jump versus Amber Geiger case. This past week, there were some things that happened, the sentencing, and what Botham's brother did in the courtroom has stirred up a lot of conversations and opinions on the social medias and the personal conversations of real life. Y'all, it has been real. So I wanna talk about that today. If you don't know anything about this situation, quick lowdown is that both of John was in his home, watching TV, eating ice cream. His door was unlocked, cracked a little bit. And Amber Geiger, who uh, is a police officer, was coming home from a shift. Uh, opened the door to what she thought was her apartment, saw someone inside, and her reaction was to shoot, and she shot and killed both him, John. Now, the sentencing was last week. She was sentenced to 10 years minimum, 99 years max, and after that, the family was given an opportunity to give their final words to Amber Geiger and uh, or at least to speak in the courtroom, and Botham's brother decided to speak. And he expressed forgiveness towards Amber Geiger, and he even asked the court if he could embrace her in a hug. And he did. And so they, it stirred up a lot of, like I said, a lot of controversy, a lot of conversation. And so I want to know, how did you guys feel about that? How do you feel about the sentencing? How do you feel about Botham's brother embracing Amber Geiger? Um, how do you feel about him expressing forgiveness? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Now, for me, uh, one thing that I noticed about the conversation that a lot of people were having, a lot of points that people bring it up, mostly uh, white people or people who uh, are blind to the issues of race in our society, um, they, um, I felt like there was some, there was huge components of what forgiveness is and what makes up forgiveness um, that were missing, that was missing from the conversation, that was missing from their perspective. And I want to voice those things here. I feel like, first and foremost, and, and, and let me just give you an example in this in case uh, any of you may be confused about what I'm referring to. There are comments made about, oh, this is the, the, uh, the example for all black people. We should, you all should just forgive. Just like both of his brother just forgave. You all shouldn't just be mad. You should allow God to work in your heart to forgive. And, and that's what you need to do instead of shouting about it, about injustices. You should just forgive. And that's the most powerful thing that you can do. Pretty much that was the resounding um, uh, opinion that I heard over and over again. I saw in the tweets and whatnot. So, uh... One huge component missing uh, from that perspective, from that view, I feel, is there's a lack of recognizing that forgiveness is costly. And forgiveness, and, and you know, this goes for the people who had the those opinions, um, but it also goes for the jurors. And, I, and I'll get to that in a moment. But there is a lack of recognizing that forgiveness is costly. For some reason, there is this notion that f forgiveness equals no, no consequences. Forgiveness equals lack of accountability. And forgiveness equals... Um, uh, we, it, it, just, it, it, it equals this person is off the hook. Um, for whatever they did to you. And I feel like as believers, as a Christian, because it's a Christian channel, if it's the first time here, hello. Uh, but I believe that as Christians, if we have that view, I believe that we've got things totally backwards. And the main example I have from that is the cross itself. 
when we look at the cross and we look at what Jesus did for us, when we think about Christ dying for our sins on the cross, he died for the penalty of sin, that we would not have to endure that ourselves will be forgiven. He is Christ is our scapegoat to to escape eternal punishment. And so we so we think of forgiveness like kind of like where we are, we stand but are standing before God, being righteous, being made right in the eyes of God, and we're good and we're embraced and we're loved, but we forget that in order for that to happen, the penalty went on someone. Someone paid the price for that. There was still a consequence. But even with when Jesus was about to be sent to the cross, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was terrified because he was about to take on the wrath of God. And he said, God, if, even if it's possible, can if this cup can pass from me, like, I don't know, let your will be done, but it, it was a terrifying thing to, to, to know that that is what you are about to endure. But it was necessary for our benefit so that we could be free. Um, I'll get into that more in a second, but uh, it, I feel, I feel like Christians have this, just have this view that, you know, when, when we forgive, there's no, there's just, again, no accountability. You know, when, when, when Jesus asked God, the father for that pass, God refused. He's like, no, the penalty has to go somewhere. It has to lay upon someone, something. Up to that point, it was laid upon bulls and goats and whatnot. But this was the Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world. And the penalty of sin was going to be put on someone. So I, so I, 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 I believe that when we think about, when, when a lot of Christians have thought about this case and forgiveness and, thought of, and, the, and, and the ideas of forgiveness... We are forgetting that accountability because unfortunately, uh, in, in this case, it was, it's, I don't know if you guys recognize this or not, but this case did not, was no longer about both of them. It was not about both of them. It was about Amber Geiger. And what do I what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is when Amber Geiger took the stand and when she cried her tears and when people saw how sorry she was, there was sympathy there. There was, oh no. This was such a mistake. Oh, we we oh it this was a lot for her. Oh my. This is how she's feeling. And how do I know that's how people thought? Because that was even the thought that came to my mind. That was the first thing that was like, dang, she's really sad. And then I had to snap myself out of it like, girl, no. <laughs> I mean, of course she's sad. Of course she's sad. She killed somebody and her career is down the toilet. And she faces, at that point, was facing Lord knows how much time in jail. She knew her life was over. Or at least it was perceived that way. Um, so of course she was crying, but the headlines became about Amber. It became about how sorry she was and how she shed her tears in court. And when there, there were two jurors who went on TV, who was talking about Amber Geiger and speaking about, oh, she just seems so sorry. And you know, both of them, both of them was a man of faith and both um he was um uh you know he 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 was about forgiveness and and so I don't think he would have wanted for Amber to have a long time in jail, so I think that ten years was appropriate, both of them mind you, it was a white man and a black woman, okay, who both said that, and I was just floored 
I'm like, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, excuse me? What do you mean? <laughs> he, he, she, she seems so sorry? Of course, anybody who is facing jail time is going to be sorry. Of course, anybody who does something who that they should not do is going to be sorry. They have, really, if they have a conscience and if they have conviction, they're going to feel sorry about it. Um, but also take, like, just take, and take other things into account here. She killed someone. You know, one of the juries, actually the black woman was like, you know, I think that if, if Botham was just shot, he wouldn't have wanted for her to go to jail. He would have wanted, you know, just, I, 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 I don't want to um, misspeak. I don't want to misquote her, but, but she was pretty much saying that he wouldn't have wanted for her to have a long time in jail. Well, sis, the problem is, is that he didn't just get shot. He died. This family is never going to have their loved one ever again. And the fact that they took her tears into account and they took the fact that both of them was a man of faith into account. It's like, yeah, she, yeah, she, she should just, you know, uh, she should be let off the hook in this sense. Oh, not, not let off the, not, not let off the hook, but she should be, um, there should be some compassion towards her because this isn't what she, you know, it, there was just a lot of sympathy there. And and so I, I believe that, honestly, this was... Ah, I'm about to get ahead of myself. But I, I wanted, to, I wanted to, to, to read a quote from Micah Edmondson. I wanted to read a quote by Micah Edmondson. He said, forgiveness means I no longer carry the weight of seeking revenge. I can forgive, I can forgive and still report a crime, seek justice, seek restitution, seek restoration, lament the devastation, tell the story of hurt and healing and avoid a dangerous person. I believe that that speaks so profoundly to what we don't believe can go together. We don't believe that forgiveness and seeking justice go together, seeking restoration, restitution, um, even pursuing something in court and someone who has done a crime to pay the penalty. Like, it no longer, this case no longer became about doing what is right there was so much corruption in this case and they were, and we'll talk more about that next time because this has to be a two part series. Unfortunately, y'all, my computer fried <laughs> last week um, or a few days ago. It literally will not turn on. The only thing that turns on is the fan. So all of my work is uh, on the computer and the hard drive. So I can't edit Jack Diddley. So I don't want this. This is already, what, 13 and a half minutes long. I don't want it to get too long. So this is going to be part one. And uh, make sure you, t you tune in for next time where we'll talk about how forgiveness is... Oh, shoot. Where my nose at? Oh, no. Where's my nose? Oh, ah, no. Ah! How forgiveness is sacrificial. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So, please, if you like this video, please like and share it. Subscribe and become a part of the community of these discussions and whatnot. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Don't forget to leave your thoughts on this case down below. Uh, we'll get more into bo both them, bro both them, both them brothers, <laughs> both them's brothers' uh, forgiveness. And, um, and, and their family statements next time. Uh, thank you all so much for your support and your love. I'm here for you. I will bring this stuff to you. Um, and yeah, I'm talking too much. Okay, see y'all later, guys. Bye!